Hi, Dr. Carter here, and I'm here with Zach from DAA Training Facility. How's it going, Doctor? Great. Good, good to see you. Uh, my name's Zach, I'm with DAA Training Facility. Um, here at DAA, we train with all sorts of populations, uh, anywhere from your teachers to your construction workers, doctors, plumbers, um, anything that you say, see in your daily life. Um, we also work with a lot of elite level athletes from supercross and motocross down to surfers and downhill skiers. Awesome. Well, is that going to teach us uh, how to start a healthy lifestyle from his perspective, as well as some other trends I really respect. So with that, let's get started. Thanks for seeing us today. Really appreciate it. Tell us who you are and what type of people you see. Hi, my name is James Taylor. I'm a coach at OPEX Fitness, and I work with clients who are serious about fitness, they're fitness enthusiasts, and they're interested in taking their performance to the next level. How's it going guys? My name is Zach Smith. Um, I'm from DEA Training Facility in Peoria, Arizona. Uh, we see all walks of life out here, everything from construction workers to teachers, plumbers, uh, and your everyday general population. Uh, first off, who I am, my name is Edwin Crockett and I work for LA Fitness. I'm a personal training manager. The typical clients I see are the ones who want to lose weight and be overall healthy. Great, let's get into it. Tell us, what's the biggest barrier for people who want to get in shape? The biggest barrier I see for people who want to get in shape is that they lack a plan. They don't know what to do, and they also lack an individual who can keep them accountable to a plan that they're going to follow. The biggest barrier I find for people that want to get in shape is they simply don't know how. They don't know where to find their resources, they don't know who to look to, and they don't know where to find them at. The biggest barrier I think I see, if I could narrow it down to the number one thing, I think number one would be not knowing why they want to get in shape. How do you respond when a client tells you they don't have time to work out? First thing I ask a client when they tell me they don't have time to work out is I ask them what their work schedule is like and their social life. If they happen to go to work really early or really late or stay at both um, and they have a really busy day, first thing I tell them is that research, a lot of research has shown that three 10 minute bouts of exercise reaps just the same amount of reward as one 30 minute bout of exercise. So as long as they can go throughout their day and slowly put in short bouts of exercise throughout the day, they're slowly going to get the same result as if they did it all at the same time. Uh, usually how I respond to clients who say they don't have time to work out, I usually talk about scheduling and making sure that we're making time to work out. When a client says, I'm too tired after work, how do you respond? When people say they're too tired after work to train, I often look at what they're doing earlier in the day, like what are they eating for lunch. Oftentimes, there's a lack of energy balance throughout the day based on what they're eating. When a client approaches me with the excuse that they don't have the energy to work out after work, first thing I do is ask them about their food intake. As important as sleep is, obviously one of the most important things we do for uh, our human body is fuel our body. So when I ask them how often they eat during the day, if they give me an answer of, they don't eat a whole lot, they eat once a day, or they haven't eaten since noon and they work out at seven o'clock at night, obviously they're not gonna have the fuel and the nutrients within their body to make sure they have a good workout. So the first thing I do after I ask that question is educate them on how often they should be eating and how often they should eat before or after their workout. What I say to people when they tell me they're too tired to train after work, I talk about nutrition, uh, in particular breakfast, what type of carbs and proteins they're consuming, and also for lunch, what type of carbs and proteins they're consuming. What's the most common barrier you see to a clean diet? The most common barrier I see to a clean diet is simply not drinking enough water throughout the day. Oftentimes, people are chronically dehydrated and it's a simple fix. The most common barrier I see to a clean diet is simply ease of access. In this day and age, with the hustle and bustle of today's society, it's so easy to go down the street or around the corner to your local fast food restaurant and pick up something quick and easy it takes time to cook your own food. It takes time to eat healthy. A lot of people don't make the time for it. So the biggest barrier is simply it's easy to go do something else. Uh, the most common barrier I see uh, for individuals who are trying to start a clean diet is lack of nutrition basics, uh, knowing what calories are, knowing what are their macronutrients, such as proteins, carbs, and fats. How about when a client asks you, what should I eat? When a client asks me what should I eat, it's often because they lack direction for their diet. What I look at first is how much protein they're eating. Oftentimes, clients can increase the amount of protein they're eating and have a more uh, stable energy balance throughout the day. 
When I'm approached by a client that asks me what to eat, I like to throw out three simple rules. The first one being, the less legs on the animal, the more healthy it is for you. The wider the bread, the quicker you're dead, meaning the wider the bread or the wider the rice, the less healthy it is for you. And the third one being, water, water, water. You can't get any more important than water as far as liquid goes. When a client asks me uh, what should they eat, first off, I usually uh, recommend talking to a nutritionist, first off. Uh, but if they can't talk to a nutritionist, I usually uh, recommend the basics uh, such as eating clean meats, uh, make sure they're eating fruits and vegetables, and drinking lots of water. A lot of people say, I don't have time to cook. How do you respond? When individuals say, I don't have time to cook, it's often that they don't value the process of cooking. So what I offer as a solution is using a crock pot where you can put in food when you're at home, leave, and even come back later and it's done, ready to eat. When I'm approached by a client about not having time to cook, first thing I do is ask them how much time within their week they spend sitting in a drive through And usually I'll back that up with talking about cooking in bulk and how much faster it is than cooking individual meals. It takes some time, but if you can narrow it down properly and find your flow, you can usually cook between 12 and 14 meals within about 45 minutes. Those meals should last you three or four days in advance. Uh, when people tell me they don't have time to cook, how I usually respond is by asking them, do they have a scheduled time that they usually cook? And if they don't, we need to go ahead and prioritize that so it, we can put it on a schedule. Lisa, a client of mine, has asked, what are some key exercises for someone who has a busy schedule? Three tips for people who want to live a healthier, more vibrant life. Number one, take small steps daily to continue to align your actions with your purpose and values in life. Number two, create a consistent and stable daily rhythm to your actions in the day. And number three, make sure to chew your food thoroughly at every meal and don't be stimulated trying to do everything at once while you're eating. If I'm approached by a client like Lisa, who has a really busy schedule and has to only work out at home, first thing I'm gonna do is I'll give them a quick 20 minute workout. All you need is 20 minutes, you don't need any equipment, I'll give them three different exercises, one for lower body, one for upper body, and one for core stabilization. And those three exercises would be squats with body weight, no weight involved, body weight push-ups, whether they're rested on their toes or their knees, and then mountain climbers where they're posted on their hands. That way we incorporate all muscles of the body in a short amount of time. Uh, so Lisa, what I'd recommend for you, you know, seeing that your schedule's really busy, uh, walking. Uh, it doesn't require any equipment. Uh, it's, you know, it's very low maintenance, easy on the joints. Uh, I definitely would recommend doing sit-ups. Uh, that way you're working on your core, and who doesn't want to have a nice core? Uh, and last but not least, I would recommend doing wall sits, because uh, that way your, your back's against a stable surface. Uh, you're still working core to a certain extent, uh, but more importantly, you're working your quads. So you're getting nice, nice leg development. Thanks, I really appreciate your time today. Before we end, I would ask if you could show us a few routines that people can do at home, particularly people who have never worked out or haven't worked out in a long time. So today, I'm gonna to talk about the clamshell. The clamshell is a great movement for some of you who may not have worked out in a long time, and it's great for those of you who may have experienced some form of low back pain. Often, low back pain can be attributed to not stabilizing the core as well as you could with the muscles surrounding your low back. Here, we're gonna learn how to activate your glutes in order to provide stabilization for your core. Firstly, we have the basic clamshell here, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna come up and you're gonna bring your hips off the ground, creating your shoulder and knees as a basis of support. So it's gonna look like this. Earlier I gave Lisa three different exercises that she can do at home that don't involve a whole lot of time and involve zero equipment. So today I'm going to explain one of those. Right now I'm going to go over the push-up, okay? What I, how I like to start a push-up is actually laying completely flat on the ground with those elbows tucked back and your hands right at your chest, okay? As we lay on the ground, when we go to push off the ground, we want to make sure that our chest and our hips and our knees are raising at an equal rate. Okay? One of the most common mistakes with a push-up is people actually lift the hips higher than they lift the chest and the knees, causing a bridge in their hips. Okay? What we want to actually do is squeeze and contract the core so that our body lifts up simultaneously all at the same time. 
So when we're pushing on the ground, our hips, our chest, and our knees are all equal and we rise at the same time. Now, for those of us that have a hard time doing an actual strict push-up, we have a modification, okay? In the modification, we're posted on our knees versus on our toes. That's our perfect, perfect push-up, guys. Hope you learned it. One of the routines uh, I would give someone who hasn't worked out in a while or has never worked out would be the wall sit. Uh, the wall sit, uh, the, the main purpose of it is to work the, the quadriceps, which is one of the largest muscle groups in the body. Uh, so as far as the actual form and technique of a wall sit, uh, what we want to do, we want to make sure, if you can imagine uh, a wall behind me and me against it, uh, I want to make sure my shoulders are against the wall, my chest is up, my lower back and my glutes are against the wall, and I'm going to slide down into a 90 degree position with my legs. Uh, so what I mean by that is, as I'm in that position, uh, my knee and my ankle are in a straight line. And then also my knee and my hips are in a straight line. Now as I'm doing this, I'm imagining I'm pressing my lower back against the wall and I'm in this 90 degree angle. And if I'm doing it correctly, I'm gonna work my quadriceps. So that'd be one I'd recommend for someone who hasn't worked out in a while or has never worked out. The wall sit. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, now we wanna talk about the form and the technique for the wall sit. All right, so now back against the wall, feet shoulder width. We're gonna come down, slide up against the wall to a 90 degree position. And what I mean by that is our knee and our ankle is gonna be in a straight line and also our knee and our hip in a straight line. So as we mentioned before, we wanna make sure our shoulders are back, our chest is up, our core is tight, and we're pressing that lower back against the wall so we can engage those quads. Now, if you're someone who hasn't worked out in a while or who's never worked out, I probably would recommend timing it anywhere between 30 seconds to one minute as a starting point. And that's the wall sit. So there you have it. I appreciate you watching this video. You got a lot of great tips today and you can start using them now. I'd like to thank Zach, Edwin, and James for coming out and sharing their knowledge. So if you run into any questions or problems, contact me below.